Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, today's lecture will be about the force, acceleration, and inertial mass of the objects. Now, this is the first lecture of a new section called Dynamics. That's part of the part called Mechanics in the Physics 14th course. Uh, the course is presented on unizor.com website. I suggest you to watch this lecture and all others from the website. The website is free and there are no advertisements, uh, but there are very detailed notes for each lecture. And this lecture is one of those where the notes are important because I'm trying to explain certain concepts. Now I can find some words as right now as, as I'm talking, but at the same time I found might be slightly different words when I was writing the comments for this lecture. So I think both are very um, beneficial for you if you will compare them. So we start dynamics. Kinematics we have finished. Uh, that part actually has the exams as well. If you want to take them, I do suggest you to take them. And now back to dynamics. Now as um, I basically said a few times, the prerequisite to the entire Physics 14 course is knowing your math, especially vectors and calculus, derivatives. Um, all this is presented in another course on the same website called, uh, called Math 14. So I suggest you to go to this uh, particular course. Again, it's free for all. Um, but in any case, I kind of assume that uh, concepts of vectors and derivatives are pretty much comfortable for you. Now, um, I always have a problem explaining certain basic concepts which are not really properly defined, um, but understood intuitively, and for instance, force, for instance, or mass. Um, but I would like to um, approach these concepts as logically as possible, as rigorously as possible. Now, I'm actually borrowing this from mathematics, um, that certain uh, concepts are basic, so basic that they are not really defined by anything which is more basic than themselves. Um, and examples, for instance, in geometry, a concept of a point or, or a straight line. They are not really defined as object, but they are defined by their properties, which we are accepting as axioms. So I think this is a very um, interesting approach, which was definitely beneficial in mass, and I will use it wherever it's necessary in physics as well. We already had concepts like space and time, for instance, which we kind of accepted without proper definition. Um, however, even if we don't really define exactly what space is, we can always introduce a system of coordinates and we can always associate position in space with certain numerical uh, triplet x, y, and z coordinates. And uh, also we not, don't really define what time is, it, I know, it's part philosophy and more than physics, I guess. But we can measure time. We have the clocks. So here again, I will approach the concept of a force um, uh, from the perspective of the properties of the force. Now, let me recall the um, law of inertia. Now, we already mentioned that law when we were talking um, about uh, kinematics and this law states that the object continues the state of rest or uniform motion with the constant velocity vector uh, unless acted um, upon it by certain external unbalanced forces. Now at that time I really uh, did not define what, what forces is and uh, now we are in the position where we're talking about the forces and that's exactly what I would like to connect together the force and the law of inertia. So the law of inertia says that um, the body will continue to be at rest or in uniform motion unless force, uh, some, some forces exist. 
which means that force is anything which is changing this uh, state of rest or, or state of uniform motion. So that's exactly what probably can be put into um, a rigorous approach to the concept of force. I don't know what force in general is. I cannot point to something and say this is the force and this is not the force. However, I can say that if there is an object and it's moving, and at some time, uh, and it's moving with uniform um, uh, velocity vector, and at some time it changes either the speed going in the same direction or it's changing the direction, so the vector of velocity is changing. That means that there is a force. Basically, I'm defining the force not by concre uh, concretely stating, okay, if I'm pushing this, that's the force. If Earth um, attracts uh, a, a stone which is falling down, that's the force. Or um, electricity um, uh, attracts plus to, plus to minus attract, attract to each other. These are so I'm not really doing all this, enumerating all the different forces that, that are too numerous to, 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 to enumerate. I'm just saying that whenever you have something which is moving uniformly and then all of, it, all of a sudden it's changing, it means that some force acted upon it. Okay, now, we have defined the force by its property to change from uniform motion or from the state of rest to some non-uniform motion. So there is some change in the velocity vector. Maybe it used to be zero, now it's not zero. Now if it used to be some constant vector like this, and now it will turn. That's all manifestation of some force. The force is defined by its property. Now we want to measure the force, right? And here we have a problem. Let's just assume that we have an example of the force. For instance, my efforts when, I, when, when I'm pushing a chair, let's say. I can feel what kind of an effort I'm actually exhorting. So I'm exhorting certain um, effort and the chair is moved. Now, if I will take, instead of a chair, I will try to move a large sofa and I will really push it with exactly the same effort as I feel the same effort. Well, I'm sure we all know that the sofa maybe will not move at all or will move much slower or to a shorter distance, etc. So what does it signify? Well, first of all, it signifies that acceleration which I have actually caused by moving a standing still chair or pushing the sofa. I'm causing acceleration. So there is acceleration in both cases, but it's different although my force, which I have exhorted, is exactly the same. I feel it's the same effort. I'm pushing the chair and the same way I'm pushing the, the sofa. Results are different. So, what we have actually come up with the following statement, that although force is actually causing acceleration of the object this force is applied against or applied to, different objects behave differently they change their vector of velocity, but they change differently. Acceleration is different. Now, obviously acceleration exists in both cases because it was it used to be like state of rest and now it's state of motion, whatever the speed is. It's definitely change in velocity vector. It used to be zero, now it's not zero. All right, so we have come up with a very important statement that force by itself the same force applied to different objects results in different acceleration. So I cannot really measure the force by the acceleration. And we want to measure quantitatively the force. I mean, it would be great if all the objects, whenever I'm pushing with the same effort, with the same force, uh, will, will act the same way. And I will measure acceleration, and that would be the result of my uh, force. Okay, so we can't do it. So what can we do? Well, we can do basically the following, very kind of obvious 
we will introduce another parameter which we will call inertial mass or simply mass. I will probably use the word mass without the word inertial although it's implied and uh, whenever in the future we will learn something about gravity it will be gravitational mass but right now the word mass means inertial mass this is the characteristic of the object since the same force results in different accelerations with different objects what I'm saying is I'm introduce a concept of mass I'm saying that the chair has one mass and the sofa has another mass and these characteristics of these objects together with the force define acceleration so we have a, a, a characteristic of the force and we have a characteristic of the object these together force and the mass they define acceleration completely so if one uh, object let's say a chair moves really far and fast when I'm pushing it with some effort and the sofa moves slower and, and shorter distance that means they have different masses okay great so I have uh, a concept of um, uh, force and I have a concept of mass and they know that the force the mass and the acceleration are related to each other question is how well next lecture will be about the laws of Newton and will, there will be a second Newton's law about this about quantitative relationship but that's not exactly um, what, what I would like to talk right now about I would like to know how to measure if I more I, I can measure acceleration right because acceleration is just uh, a second derivative from the position so if I measure my position as a function of time I can have the first and the second derivatives and the second derivatives will uh, derivative will give me the uh, the acceleration at any moment of time so I have uh, instantaneous position instantaneous velocity vector which is the first derivative and instantaneous acceleration vector it's all vectors right in three-dimensional world okay so I know how to measure acceleration but I don't know how to measure mass and they don't know how to measure the force so I have to introduce something some some technique uh, which will allow me to measure these things and then I can think about how to uh, combine them together into some kind of a formula like the second law of Newton okay so how can we measure um, uh, two out of three things you see if I have some kind of a functional dependency between these two things if I know the function and I know how to measure X I can obviously measure the Y however now I have two different parameters I have acceleration which is some kind of a function of the force and the mass and I don't know neither of these all right we actually can do something and here is the way how I suggest to 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 build our measurement um, uh, theory measurement techniques now um, I do not know how to measure yet but I know how to answer the question are these two forces the same or different how can I do it well let's take one particular object I will apply one force against it and then another force against it if the results acceleration of this object are the same it means the forces are the same so I have to repeat experiment with two different forces but under all other uh, conditions which are exactly the same the same object the same surrounding the same whatever location so if my two forces result in the same acceleration for this one and only object these two forces are the same so I can answer the question are these forces the same or not now experiment shows that if two forces are the same for one object they are the same for another uh, object so there are no other characteristics than the object itself and basically its mass which we don't know yet but any case, anyway I can answer the question about sameness of the forces okay can I answer the question about sameness of the masses of two different objects 
The answer is yes, because I will take one and only force, I will put one object against this force and see how it moves, and then I take another object against exactly the same force, and I know how this moves. If the movements are the same, acceleration resulting in this action are the same, that means the objects have the same mass, the same important physical characteristics, which is kind of a measure of inertia of this object or measure of resistance of this object to change its position under the action of the uh, of the force so the mass is basically a measurement of how responsive the object is to the force and experiments show that the larger the bigger the heavier objects are less responsive to the force all right, but that's besides the point. But anyway, now I can determine are the masses two of two different objects the same. I just apply the same force and see if there is the same result. That actually is a very important um, uh, notion which we have right now, because what we do is we will introduce a unit of mass first. And it can be anything. I can take any particular object and say, okay, the mass of this object is the unit. So, what people actually did, they um, took the um, a small cylinder uh, of uh, platinum and iridium alloy, which weighs approximately the same as a cubical decimeter of water, like one liter of water more or less the same weight on the surface of the, uh, of the Earth. It doesn't really matter how we obtain this. It happened to be more or less equal to uh, this. And that was obviously the original idea, but it's completely irrelevant to our theory, our rigorous theory. So we took this object, this platinum iridium cylinder, and say this is the unit of mass, which means this particular object will help us to measure mass of any other uh, uh, object. So, here is one kilogram. That's the name of the unit of mass. So, we have this cylinder. Now, what we are saying is, we can introduce the measurement of the force. If the force acting on this one kilogram uh, platinum iridium cylinder causes one meter per second square acceleration. So this is the mass. This is acceleration caused by uh, this force. Now this is the unit of acceleration in system C, right? System international law. Then I'm saying that this is a unit of measurement of any force, and it's called Newton. Obviously, after Sir Isaac Newton. So the force is measured in, in Newtons, and what I'm saying is that if I have this my cylinder, platinum iridium cylinder, which weigh which has a mass of one kilogram by definition so we just by definition took the cylinder and say this is one kilogram this is the unit of mass so if i am uh, causing this particular object the acceleration of one meter per second square it means my force is equal to one newton by value by magnitude but force is actually a vector and we are assuming that the direction of this vector is exactly the same as the direction of acceleration it, 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 it's causing. So the force is a vector which is directed towards the vector of acceleration it, it causes and we can measure it if it's one kilogram object and one meter per second square acceleration, that's one newton. Okay, that's one newton. How about 10 newtons? Very easily. If I will take the same object of one kilogram and I will obtain 10 meters per second, that would be 10 newtons. So that's how we measure. So I can basically have any 
um, uh, ac ac acceleration, I can measure acceleration of this particular object and say that this E is in newtons uh, measure of my, my force. So I can measure the force by how the force is acting upon this particular cylinder uh, made of uh, platinum and iridium. Now, I have already told you that any other uh, object which has exactly the same mass would have exactly the same acceleration. Again, that's the um, experimental fact. So it doesn't really matter what kind of a object this is, whether it's this particular cylinder which is basically stored somewhere in, in Paris, if I'm not mistaken, or, or any other object which has exactly the same mass. And we know how to determine whether it has the same mass or not, right? So it doesn't really uh, what kind of an object as long as it uh, has the mass of one kilogram, the same as that cylinder in Paris, right? Okay, so now we can measure the force. Now, knowing the force, I can actually measure the mass of any object. For instance, if I am acting with the force of one Newton on some unknown mass, and I have acceleration um, k a, no, just k, if acceleration is equal to k meters per second, and this is the force of one Newton acting upon this particular object. So instead of one meter per second, I have k meter per second. Well, the object obviously is, well, consider, well, if k is big positive number, so I have a bigger acceleration with the same force. Well, it means my object is, well, smaller, uh, has less mass. It has less resistance to the force. And the measure of resistance to the force is the mass. So I'm saying that my mass, by definition, again, I'm basically defining this, is equal to 1 over k kilogram. So if the force acts and it has, let's say, 25 meter per second, second square result, it means my object is 1 25th of a kilogram. And vice versa, if my acceleration is equal to half of the meter uh, by, by second square, then my mass is 2 kilograms. So that's how I measure masses and I measure uh, forces. So again, first I just by definition decided what's my unit of measurement of the mass. Then I can measure all the forces and knowing all the forces I can actually measure any other uh, measure the mass of any other object by basically checking how it moves under certain uh, uh, force. Well, this is how I introduce these three main concepts in dynamics. The force, the acceleration, and the inertial mass, or just mass as we are saying right now. That was the purpose of my lecture, to introduce you from the intuitive understanding uh, of these concepts, the, the theory behind it, or how you can rigorously build your physical theory where you have the units of measurements, you have definitions, you have properties, and uh, you have the relationship between them. Well, that's all I wanted to say um, today. I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture. Again, it explains more or less the same thing, but it's like a textbook. It has maybe a slightly different presentation, etc. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.